Hey, great to be with you in the Word of God today, and um, I'm just so privileged and blessed to be able to be part of your devotional time, and I do pray that God is speaking to you during these times. We're in the Gospel according to John today, so if you have your Bible, I want to encourage you to open it up, whether it's uh, digital or um, an actual book, and uh, John chapter 3. Great verse today that I know you've heard many, many times, but just so powerful. Jesus says this, you know, he's caught a little context here. He's in, engaged in this conversation with Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee. He was uh, the teacher of Israel. Uh, he was an individual who, who really did understand the system uh, that God had established for approaching him. And he came kind of in a clandestine way to Jesus. You know, didn't really want to, probably at this point, you know, did not really want to uh, have a lot of people know that he was getting a little time with this rabbi from Nazareth. And so he comes at night, he acknowledges that the leadership uh, generally understands that, that God was with Jesus because no one could do the things that Jesus was doing without God. And, you know, as he's making this statement, he's giving kind of this as an introduction uh, in his dialogue with Christ. Jesus says this in John 3, 3, uh, he says, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And as you read this story, you know, there's immediate pushback by Nicodemus because, you know, he's, he's framing the words of Christ in a physical sense. He doesn't understand that Jesus is speaking spiritually. And, you know, in a way, Jesus is a little astounded that this individual who was known as the teacher of all Israel didn't understand the words that he was speaking. You know, where was the hang-up for Nicodemus? Why was it that this individual who was a, a professional in religious institutionalism, like really that's the deal. If anyone understood the institution of religion with respect to Judaism, it would have been Nicodemus. And yet for all of that, he was missing something that was core, something that was essential. He wasn't even getting the basic point that Christ was making. And, you know, I as I, I think about this, and there's obviously, you know, so many different teachings on this portion of Scripture. John chapter 3 is just so significant for us as Christians. But it really does identify uh, and it does remind us that systems don't save, the Savior saves. Systems don't save, the Savior saves. You know, you can be a professional in the religious system. You can understand the institution. You can have the organization all dialed in. You know, with respect to a faithfulness, to a religious program, you can be faithful to and meticulous to the most finite degree, and you can still miss the point. I, I just want you to think about that for a minute, and I think it's important because you know, sometimes, you know, as Protestants, we think, well, we don't run the risk of running into that problem. Maybe Catholics do. Maybe, you know, that's an issue in Judaism, but it's not really an issue in Protestantism. And, it, and yet it is. Yet it is. There are many people who are looking to a system to save them. There are many people who are relying on their religious performance or their their faithfulness to a program. You know, maybe even like Nicodemus, being a professional in it to the finite degree, like understanding how the system rolls and performing maybe even perfectly. And you know the scary thing is? You can do all of that and you can still miss the main point. And the main point is being born again by the Spirit of God. The main point is having a, a robust, vibrant relationship with the Savior, in which you are depending solely and completely upon Him for salvation. You know, such a, a huge difference between those two things. And you know, I, I just wanna make this personal right now because this has been on my mind a lot. You know, in a way, we have been displaced from the typical religious system that we're used to. And by that, I just simply mean going to church, listening to a teaching, you know, while you're sitting with a, 
um, corporately with the people of God, engaged in corporate worship, you know, all of the all of the programming that we have in Protestantism. And I'm not saying that those things are wrong, but how has it worked for you for the last three or four months? As those things have been stripped away, has your relationship with God been stripped away simultaneously? Let me just put it a different way because we all need to do this evaluation. Over the last three or four months, have you drawn nearer to God or do you feel like you've been slipping away from him with the infrastructure taken away, with the religious infrastructure taken away, have you still been pressing into the Father's heart or have those disciplines of love been lessening day by day? Look, if they've been lessening, if you feel yourself drifting, then it's really possible you've been relying on a system to connect you with, to God instead of a vibrant, robust relationship with the Savior. Look, gathering together as the people of God is important. Sitting under the teaching of the scriptures as we're gathered together publicly is important. But at the same time, just you drawing near personally to Christ in your relationship with him, apart from all those other things, is the most important thing. So today, look, I'm so thankful that that you know we get to spend this time together daily. Draw near to him, make the space for him, sit at his feet today and let him refresh you and strengthen you. Don't allow yourself to drift away. Lean into the Lord, especially during these times. Father, thank you so much for your son. Thank you that we are born again from above. God, it's not our efforts or our works or our performance. You sent a savior to save us. And today we look to and we rely upon the person of Christ to do that thing. Help us to draw near to him in Jesus' name. Amen.